Um, hello. Um, so I won't tell anything about ICTV now. I wanted to talk to you about my latest project that I started at the University of Liverpool um, 18 months ago, which is using metaviromics methods and seeing if we can um, find pathogenic viruses in the environment. And the environment that I'm working on is illustrated by this beautiful idyllic um, sunset um, over the town of Conwy in Wales. Um, oh, sorry. So this is part of the bigger um, Viraqua project um, of uh, different universities and research stations in the UK where we try to trace the fate and infectivity of human pathogenic viruses in the environment. And we're mostly focused on um, so enteric viruses that um, transfer through the fecal oral route. So um, there's, a, there's been a lot of like um, pathogenic virus outbreaks um, caused by water or contaminated food. Um, and I wanted to draw your attention to the top left one, um, which happened in the UK um, this winter, where somebody brought in mussels from um, into a hospital to feed a friend who was hospitalized. And those mussels were infected with norovirus and 180 patients and in the hospital ended up being sick with norovirus, um, which kind of looks a bit like this. Um, so it's, it's quite of a, a, an economically important um, disease, um, norovirus, because it spreads very rapidly um, and, and people just get horribly sick but usually they don't die. So what I'm trying to do is to see, we have this, um, we have this site that we investigate, which is in Wales, uh, and it's the Conwy River catchment. So on the right-hand side, um, you see the, the Google map of the river, where there's four wastewater treatment plants that serve small communities. The river starts in the Snowdonia National Park, so it's quite pristine when it starts. We have collected influent and effluent in the wastewater treatment plants um, along the river. We've uh, also collected wastewater uh, upstream and middle stream and downstream. And at the end, um, here, there's mussel beds. Um, and there's actually one of the wastewater effluent sites is right at one of the mussel beds. So we wanted to see if we could use viromic, metaviromic methods to find the viruses in the wastewater, in the river, and in the mussels. Because as um, we saw this morning, um, yeah, um, wastewater, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, ah, never mind. Uh, I'll go to my next slide. Because this is cool, this is part of our, uh, our project where, you, um, where modelers are putting tracers into the river. Um, and the river is a tidal river, so you can see on the left-hand side, maybe you don't see it in the back, I'll, I'll put the other one on as well. Um, you can see where tracers are put in the river, um, how they spread, how the tide influences the spread of um, potentially um, pathogenic viruses that are put into the river from um, wastewater sites. So the one on the right hand side is a combined sewer overflow discharge, which is basically if there's a storm event, wastewater treatment plants in the UK are allowed to put out untreated sewage into the sea or into the river. And this one um, is right at um, a, this here is a tourist beach. So you can see that there's potentially quite a bit of um, shit happening. <laughs> so um, we had a, a massively sophisticated sampling system um, that I was allowed to do for one of the sampling sites before I was sent back to the lab. So this was our cleanest sample where we just um, went out and took four times 50 liters um, of river water along five points in the river, um, brought it back to the lab and did a um, tangential flow ultrafiltration um, where it ended up looking like this in the end. So from um, four times 50 liters, we went down to less than 10 milliliters and then filtered it 
to get the viromes, not just the microbiomes. So then our sequencing strategy was, we, um, for this case, because norovirus is an RNA virus, um, I looked only at, at, at the RNA that was in there. Um, and so we did 32 RNA-seq libraries of four wastewater treatment plants, five water samples, two sediment samples, one of the beach um, that I pointed out, um, two shellfish bits, which were mussels, and then positive negative control and extraction control used um, a directional library, um, did not use any amplification, um, except for the PCR steps that are included in the library preparation and the Illumina high seq sequencing. So I wanted to show you this slide because we got really good um, high uh, deep sequenced libraries where you can see the number of the reads um, in a logarithmic scale on the y-axis and the different libraries in, in my columns. So I had between five and 12 million reads per sample, but then I had to clean them up because I started my extraction, when I, when I was finished with my extractions, I only had about 100 picograms of RNA per sample and we succeeded in, in building libraries from that, but that also meant that I had huge quantities of contamination. Um, anything, basically I sequenced half of the skin microbiome, I feel. So my post-QC reads are my um, gray ones in the middle. I went um, from my, my raw reads after, after subtracting my controls um, about one to five logs down in number of reads that I had. And then those reads that mapped to viral databases that I went even uh, one log further down. So um, this was quite a bit of an effort to get a, f a good curated data set. So if I compare it, all those viral reads with the viral RepSeq database, um, it looks a bit like this. I like these bubble plots because it gives you a nice overview of what the diversity was. So in the rows, we have all the different families of viruses that I found. About half of these are RNA viruses or unclassified ones. There was still quite a bit of DNA virus in there. I did a DNAs treatment, but the DNAs doesn't always work very well um, when you have a high, uh, dirty samples or for single-stranded DNA viruses also doesn't seem to work very well. So what I want to point out here is that obviously um, the wastewater uh, looked the most diverse. Um, the mussels still had quite a lot of viruses in there. Um, and the river water um, had mostly bacteriophages. These are the myo Protocyphoviridae um, families of viruses. So then I wanted to look um, a little bit at the diversity and the difference between samples. So I chose the Earth Microbiome Project ontology to divide my samples into different types. Um, and so I went free living and host associated at level one to compare the number of families that was in each sample type. So um, then I divided up in animal associated, with, which was muscle, um, saline, non-saline, and sewage. And when, what I wanted to point out to you here is that it looks like there's a similar number of vi virus families present in the muscles and the sewage. So that was, that was a bit um, worrying for me, especially when I looked at, at my assembled data sets. Um, and what I also saw was that if I divide it up in wastewater influent and wastewater effluent, that it seems like there's a higher number of viral families present in the effluent than in the influent. So it might be possible, uh, and I need to investigate this further with quantitative methods, that the whole process of wastewater treatment itself enriches for viruses, or at least for different virus families. And there was one sample, um, one sediment sample that completely tanked um, that after my, my um, 
quality control had almost nothing left. It had like three reads left. So that's that one, and I'm going to ignore it now. So I wanted to, based on, on the different families that were present at the different levels, I wanted to, I did a clustering, and, and what, what kind of worried me is again that there was this clustering of certain wastewater samples and certain mussel samples and the beach sediment sample that came together. And, and this was worrying because I didn't want to see this. Um, I don't eat mussels, but some people may. So, but what, what does it not mean? Because this was families. Um, viral families are, are very difficult to, to, to draw conclusions from. So, um, my question was, do my mussels <laughs> taste like shit? Um, so I, then I went to look for um, strain level comparisons of the assembled context being I wanted to try and extract near complete viral genomes so that I could actually see are there um, um, pathogenic viruses that are the same in the wastewater and in the mussels. So these are just the different viral species, uh, just a quick bar plot of the viral species that I found and all of those um, on the left are my wastewater samples from the different sites. I is each time influent and E is effluent, and then mussels and beach sediment. Um, so are there the same colors in the left-hand side on the right-hand side? So I went to look at specific pathogenic viruses. So the one that I found most was rotavirus A. Um, rotavirus causes diarrheal disease. A rotavirus A is specifically a human-associated rotavirus, but can also be um, bovine or porcine. Um, so I saw it in both mussels, sediment, and certain wastewater samples. Um, and these are a number of contexts that are larger than 500 nucleotides. Um, so it's, it was kind of worrying again. So then I went to look um, more in specifics because rotavirus is a member of, is an RNA virus, a member of the Rio Verde, and it has 11 segments. So that confounds any metaviromic analysis because you're always going to find multiple contigs. And, and if you find different segments with a different genotype, are they from the same virus or are they from two different viruses? So I, I went over all of the different segments that um, are in the databases and found full rotavirus genomes in many of my wastewater samples, but not in my um, mussels and my sediment samples. So the, whatever was in my mussels in my sediment samples was seemed to be degraded or, or fragmented or only partially there, whereas in the uh, wastewater, it was fully there. So when I genotyped it, um, the genotype information is, is here. Um, so um, these genome constellations, as they are called, so the, the combination of all the genotypes, was distinctly bovine for, for, um, for everything that I found. So it's more likely that there's a um, farm runoff um, that ends up in the sewage rather than um, people actually having rotavirus in, in that area. So another one so, um, that I looked at was sapovirus, because this is um, an enteric virus that is similar to norovirus, but wasn't supposed to be in whales. It's a Japanese um, origin virus. Um, so I found quite a lot of it in um, one of my wastewater samples, but still in some of my mussel samples and my beach sediment sample. I, I've pulled out two whole genomes of um, a sapovirus that was similar to sapovirus genotype 2, 70% um, similar. Um, and what was interesting about that is genotype 2 wasn't even in our like um, qPCR data set that we checked. We didn't have, even have primers or anything because genotype 2 is not supposed to be in whales. So this is very interesting and illustrates that you can use metaviromics to find um, what you then should look for with qPCR maybe. But again, 
I only found it in the wastewater, the full length, not in the muscles. So it's, it's, it gives an indication that maybe muscles enrich these viruses, but they might, they, they might not be as uh, infective anymore. So I also found some smaller fragments of norovirus, um, some fragments of astrovirus, and um, a bunch of picornaviruses, but most were environmentally related, but there was kind of a worrying one that I still need to look into is that a potentially complete cosavirus was present in the beach sediment, meaning that, and that's associated with acute flaccid paralysis. So um, yeah, maybe not go to the beach, I don't know. So what can I, can I conclude so far from this is that metaviromics seems to be, it, it's a great tool to find emerging viruses and genotypes that we then can include in our, in our screens, but it's not suitable for routine di diagnostics because it was just so much work to get to these results because of all the contamination, because of um, starting with huge quantities of liters of water that you can't just do in a routine setting. Um, what I also found is that if I shouldn't do an RNA treatment step in my extraction protocol, and when I um, took it out, um, so some, you might want to do an RNA treatment to get rid of the bacterial and, and eukaryotic RNA, but if you do that, you lose out on a whole lot of RNA viruses. When I took it out, suddenly I have 1,500 near complete RNA virus genomes in my data set. So it seems like sediments and mussels are enriched with viruses compared with um, the river water, because in the river water, I did not find any pathogenic viruses. Um, but it seems like um, the viruses in the mussels are more degraded um, and more distinct. So um, do your mussels taste like shit? Partially. And Please give me money for more research. Um, and I'd like to thank all my collaborators from these different institutions, and particularly um, Kata Farkas, Emma Green, James McDonald, Davy Jones for help with sampling, my students Christian Billion and Ronan for um, doing validation and PCRs, and my um, supervisors Heather Allison and Al McCarthy. Thank you very much.